Hey guys, welcome to this question. So here we have a circuit where, let's just see if there's anything interesting here. They've told us there's an internal resistor of 0 0.5, an unknown EMF. Uh, everything that they've said is already shown on the diagram. Now question 8.1 says define EMF. Okay, so what we should know is that from like grade 10, there was this formula with voltage, which was equal to W over Q. And that formula gives us a very nice idea about what voltage actually means. So we can see that voltage is equal to the amount of energy per coulomb of charge. So voltage is, um, well, let's say is amount of energy per coulomb of charge. So we know that EMF is also a voltage, but the EMF of the battery, it tells us what is the maximum amount of energy that the battery could give for each little charge. So for example, if you go to a shop and you buy a 1.5 volt battery. So on the package, it says 1.5 volts, that is the EMF. So that means that that battery if it operates under perfect conditions, it will be able to give you 1.5 joules of energy for every coulomb of charge. So let me show you that in another way. So if you have a battery, then what happens is that when the electricity starts flowing through the battery, let's say we have a tiny little charge over here, like a tiny little electron, when that electron moves through the battery, it will be given 1.5 joules of energy because voltage is the amount of energy per charge. So it will be the amount of energy per charge. So, so EMF, the actual definition of that is the maximum energy per Coulomb of charge. Next question. It tell we they, they tell us here that the reading on the voltmeter. So here's the voltmeter over here. Decreases by 1.5 volts when the switch is closed. Now that sentence right there is very important, and I'm going to try explain it now. When you go to a shop, let's say you walk into a shop, and you are going to buy yourself a 12 volt battery. That 12 volts is the EMF. That is the maximum amount of voltage that that battery can give. Then all of a sudden you're busy going home and you get home and you build yourself an electric circuit, right? I mean, that's what so many people in grade 11 and 12 do. We love building electric circuits. Now, obviously I'm being very sarcastic right now. Um, we ain't got time to build electric circuits. What is this? The thirties? <laughs> um, so, you build yourself an electric circuit, and let's say you build a simple little circuit, so you've got your battery, and you've got some type of light bulb, and then you take a voltmeter, because that's how you measure voltage, and you connect the voltmeter across the battery, and all of a sudden, you look on the voltmeter, and it says 11.5 volts. But wait a minute, didn't you buy a 12 volt battery? and now it's only giving 11.5, what is going on? That is just because of this thing called internal resistance. The battery, the battery itself has a little bit of resistance. And so um, the electrons are given 12 volts, okay? But by the time that the electron makes its way outside of the battery, by the time it gets on the outside, it's already lost a little bit of voltage because it had to go through the battery and the battery has resistance. So when it gets to the outside of the battery, it only has 11.5 volts available for the actual circuit. Okay, you see that? So this is very interesting. They tell us that when, so, so oh, another thing, when the switch is open, then there is no electricity flowing. So then what would happen is that this voltmeter it would actually go and measure, it would measure the EMF. It would measure your EMF when there's no electricity flowing. But then as soon as you close the switch, 
electricity starts flowing and then all of a sudden this voltmeter is going to decrease a little bit because when the electricity can flow through the battery that is when the internal resistance starts um, it becomes activated and it starts to decrease the voltage a little bit. So it says here, give a reason why the voltmeter decreases. This will just be because of the internal resistance in the battery. Okay, internal resistance in the battery. So just remember guys that your EMF is the absolute maximum that you could ever get. So you go to the shop and you get a 12 volt battery, that is the EMF. Now when you get home, that voltage is gonna be used up in two different places. Some of it is gonna go to the actual circuit and that's everything on the outside. That's what you actually want the voltage for. But then unfortunately, some of the voltage is gonna be used inside the battery. So we'll call that the internal voltage. Now your teacher will maybe call this terminal over here, and this one they'll maybe call it the lost volts. So in our example that I used over here, the EMF was 12, and the circuit was only 11.5, and that means that 0.5 volts was lost inside the battery. Okay, so just keep that in mind for just now. Another thing I'd like to add quickly is that to calculate the circuit voltage, that's the that uses the that uses all we know that voltage is equal to I times R. Now if you're looking at the circuit, which is the stuff on the outside, then that would be you use the R, which is and this is the those are the resistors on the outside of the circuit. Then if you want to calculate the internal voltage, you use the internal resistance, like that. And then if you had to take a, um, if we put EMF here, if you had to take out a common factor of I, then you would end up with I and then R plus R. And so this is a formula that we are all very used to by now. Okay, I'm just showing you a bit of a background where that all comes from. So when your teacher shows you this formula, it's nothing fancy. All that they're actually saying is that the EMF gets used inside the battery and it also gets used on the outside of the battery. So maybe I'll call it this the circuit. So that's that's all that we're actually saying in grade 11 and 12 here is that the EMF gets used up in the battery and it also gets used in the circuit. In grade 10, there was no internal. So when you buy a five volt battery, you were also gonna get five volts on the outside. All right, Kevin, you are now going a little bit too far with your talking. Let's move on with the question. <laughs> right, so where are we? Uh, 8.3.1, it says um, the switch is now closed. Calculate the reading on the ammeter. Where's the ammeter? It's over there. Okay, so we can just use the formula. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. You can't use this formula because we could easily calculate this and this. However, we don't know the current and we don't know the uh, EMF. And that's usually, sometimes teachers only show that formula. But I'm gonna show you guys some interesting things. Um, yes, you can use that formula at, if you want, but look here. We know the formula I equals to V over R. Now I'm gonna show you different ways of using that formula. For example, if you want to use this voltage over here, remember that this voltage over here measures the circuit or terminal, that's another name for it, or in some of my other videos I might have called it external. That's what that voltage measures. And if you wanna use that voltmeter, then you must use, you must only use the external resistors or the circuit resistors, which is this one, this one, and this one, okay? Now, if you rather wanna use the internal voltage, then which resistor do you use? Then you use the internal resistor. Okay, and if you want to use the EMF of the battery, then you must use, because the EMF means the total, then you must use the, the external resistors and also the internal resistor. And this is almost that formula that I showed you just now, just written in a different way. Now, the problem is we do not have the external voltage, but we do have the internal voltage. How do I know that? It is because they told us when the, when the switch was opened, the reading on the voltmeter decreases by 1.5. So if you think about this, imagine that this was a 12 volt battery. Then they tell us that when the switch is closed, it decreases by 1.5. So that means that this would now say 10.5 and that would go on the external. 
So then what happened to the 1.5? That was obviously used inside the battery. So that 1.5 volts is the internal voltage. And so to calculate the current, we would actually use that formula. Okay, and so the current would be the internal volts, which is 1.5, and the internal resistor, we have that as 0 0.5, and so we can work out the current as 3 amps. Okay, the next question says, calculate the total external resistance of the circuit. So that's quite an easy one. Remember that the external is this one and these two. Now remember that these two are in parallel, so we'll add them up in parallel using the parallel formula. So that's 1 over 25 plus 1 over 15, and that would give, if we go type that in, 8 over 75, and then you flip that over to get R parallel as 75 over 8, which is 9.375. Now I'm not going to round off because that's not the final answer. Then to find the total external, we'll just have to add this 4, and so R total will be 9.375 plus 4, and that's going to be 13 point, uh, if we round off now, 13.38 ohms. And then this next question asks us to calculate the EMF of the battery. Now that's easy, we have everything we need, so we can just use EMF equals to I R plus R, and so the EMF value is what we're trying to find. The, the ammeter is 3. The external resistance, we got 13.38. And then the internal resistor is 0 0.5. And then if we go work that all out, that should give us 41.64 volts. Question 8.4 says, a learner makes the following statement. The current through the resistor R3 is larger than the current R2. Is the statement correct, yes or no, and then explain your answer. All right, so when current flows, we know that it goes like this, like this, like this, like this, and then when it gets here, it splits. Now, it doesn't always split in half. It splits depending on the resistance value. So some of it will go this way, and the rest would go this way. Now, the way it works is that, think about this. If you are walking into a shop, and there's a big heavy door, and there's a small, or there's a light door that's easy to open. What would most people want to do? Would they want to go through the big heavy door that's very difficult to open, or would you want to rather go through the easy light door? Well, most of you watching you, I'm watching you, seriously, most of you watching this would want to go through the lighter and the easier door. Okay, that is the natural thing in life. We always want to have the path where there is least resistance. And that is the same way it works in electricity. So when these electrons get to this little piece over here, they can either go this way, where there will be 25 ohms of resistance, or they can choose to go this way, where there will be 15 ohms of resistance. Now, most of the electrons would actually go this way, because there is less um, resistance. Some of them there are some mad electrons that will go this way, but most of them would go through this path. So the current in this one will be more. So the learner says that the current through the resistor R3 is larger than the current in resistor R2. That learner is correct. So we'll say, um, is the statement correct? Yes. And what's the reason? Uh, we can say current is inversely proportional to resistance. So what does that mean? It means that when the resistance is large, then the current is small. And when the resistance is small, then the current is large. So the student is correct. Lovely, last question. Um, and these are, um, oh no, this is quite an easy question actually. It says the four ohm resistor is now removed from the circuit. Okay, so we take that away. How will this affect the EMF? Guys, the EMF can never ever change. If you go to the shop, and you buy yourself a 12 volt battery, that is a 12 volt battery. You can take the plastic wrapper off if you want, <laughs> but it's still a 12 volt battery. You cannot do anything to change that. So the EMF can never change. And so this answer will be remains the same. All right, thanks for watching.